Hi, I'm Eric Freeman, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. Following is the next installment of the State of Deer and Elk series on deer harvest management. I'll touch on how this is fundamental to our work with deer and involves managing for specific outcomes through harvest. I'll begin with a list of biological reasons that wildlife managers may alter harvest. For example, managers might recommend increasing harvest to protect habitat. After the Tex Creek winter range burned in 2016, emergency hunts were enacted to reduce pressure on newly seeded areas. Similarly, ungulate populations can negatively impact browse, and managers might increase antlerless harvest to reduce these impacts. Managers might recommend a harvest regime that maximizes productivity. Looking at the graph on the right, the population is at its most productive, meaning that the number of yearling bucks on the landscape is maximized at a lower number than the maximum possible population. In other words, there is a reason to have fewer than we could have. Last for biological outcomes, we might modify harvest in response to the threat of disease. For example, we have been reducing deer density around the Slate Creek drainage to inhibit the spread of CWD. In contrast, there might be reason to reduce harvest after disease-related die-offs in some circumstances. Moving to social outcomes, at its core, this is a tug of war between managing for opportunity and managing for mature bucks. We see a continuum of this across the western states, ranging from exclusively controlled hunts and high buck to doe ratios to over-the-counter opportunity that spans six weeks and includes the rut. Idaho certainly falls on the opportunity of this spectrum for our public's desire. Managing for lower hunter densities in an effort to increase hunter satisfaction or enhance experiences is another social outcome, as is managing for reduced agricultural or urban conflict with deer populations. Knowing how to achieve each of these options is the easy part. Knowing which options to manage for or how to balance them is much more difficult. To make this determination, the department frequently surveys the public to better understand their preferences. We develop management plans that consider the department's mission and summarize science and public opinion. And we administer the season setting process to implement these management plans at the local level and allow another level of public input on specific harvest proposals. In practice, we can look at this process at longer and shorter time frames. On the six to 10 year time frame, we survey the public and develop management plans. This process provides managers with the big picture framework to work within. Taking a brief look here at highlights from the most recent whitetail deer hunter survey in 2017, we see that over 70% of whitetail deer hunters were satisfied with the various aspects of their opportunity and that when given the choice, mule deer hunters preferred the option that allowed them to hunt more frequently, represented by the cooler colors, over the option that provided the potential to harvest a larger buck, but hunt less frequently, represented by warmer colors. This takes us to the shorter time frames, where the department constantly collects data and uses it to set harvest seasons under the guidance from our management plans and public survey results. The data collection part of this occurs continually as harvest and hunter participation are estimated annually and feedback from sportsmen is constantly received. Additionally, we collect population data through surveys and collaring efforts. I'll note here that management of mule deer and white-tailed deer is quite different. On one hand, we have more data available for many of our mule deer populations, while on the other hand, white-tailed deer are much, have much higher reproductive rates, which allows for more flexibility in harvest. So in response to these data streams, what management options are available to adjust harvest? And I'll lump these into three groups here. We can regulate the tools available for sportsmen to use for hunting. We have examples of this. Sportsmen are limited to rifles weighing 16 pounds or less, and muzzleloaders must be traditional. Additionally, we regulate the use of four-wheelers in some units through the motorized hunt rule. And I have an example here of how that might affect harvest. The graphs show the major deer hunting units in southeastern Idaho, where units in blue have the motorized hunt rule in effect and those in red do not. We see elevated success rates in units where the rule does not exist and have elevated post-hunt buck to doe ratios in units where it does exist. Next, we can use general or over-the-counter hunting seasons in various forms. The possibilities are nearly endless for modifying general seasons with changes having various effects. For example, shortening hunting seasons moderately has little effect on harvest, while aggressively shortening hunting seasons likely decreases harvest, but likely comes with the cost of dramatically decreased hunter satisfaction. Alternatively, slight increases to season length likely don't change harvest. 
while significant increases that include times when deer are more vulnerable likely would increase harvest. Similarly, season timing can be altered. Deer hunts earlier or later in the year likely increase harvest when compared to hunts in mid-October when deer are likely less active, less visible, and less vulnerable. The table here shows harvest seasons through time in units 1 and 76, two units with generally robust deer populations. Lastly, we use controlled hunts to provide opportunities for hunters to harvest mature individuals or address specific needs. In some cases, all hunting in a unit is limited, while in others, these hunts occur in units with general season hunts, just with alternative season dates or weapon types. This combination of approaches and regulations is harvest management. I wanted to look at a case from southeastern Idaho, shown as a graph depicting a trend in antlered harvest in Unit 76 since 2015. How should managers respond to the declining harvest? Let's start by asking pertinent questions. Do other data corroborate a shrinking population? What do our surveys suggest? Is this an anomaly or a trend? What were the weather conditions like during the harvest season? Do we know why the decline is happening? And what is the broader context of the decline? So here's harvest in the same unit over a 30 year span. Notably, the slump we are in isn't an anomaly. However, we should also be thinking about the broader social and environmental contexts. For example, has public sentiment changed or has the broader context of environmental conditions been altered? For example, there used to be far more hunters in many southeastern Idaho units than there are today, but concerns about crowding are raised more frequently. Similarly, have hotter and drier conditions in North Idaho increased the frequency of EHD outbreaks, or has habitat loss in southeastern Idaho reduced the ability of a population to rebound from severe winters? Assume we learn that the population decline is real, we know why it's happening, and we understand the context. The next question is, will adjusting harvest make a difference? In the example I've been using, there's currently zero antlerless harvest. So maintaining the same harvest opportunity won't impact the ability of a population for regrowth after a severe winter, as the reproductive portion is unaffected. Alternatively, the buck segment of the population will likely take longer to recover if harvest opportunity remains unchanged. This raises the question at the core of most harvest management decisions. Are the benefits of a change, or the lack thereof, worth the cost? This question can be asked a couple ways. To start, there are costs associated with reducing opportunity. When we squeeze that balloon, where do the displaced hunters go? Or do they stop hunting altogether? Currently, less than 16% of Idahoans purchase hunting licenses. We don't want hunters to have a smaller voice over time, and this is dependent on the public's involvement with the resource. In contrast, there are benefits to re reducing opportunity. For example, hunter experiences might improve as they perceive being less crowded, and harvest will likely be reduced, which may allow the targeted segment of the population to grow back more quickly. On a similar note, maintaining opportunity can, at times, result in frustrated hunters who are unsuccessful or who had poor experiences. On the other hand, by maintaining opportunity, we continue to meet the desire of most Idahoans to have the opportunity to hunt annually. A few thoughts as I wrap up. Harvest management is managing for a specific outcome through harvest and begs the question of what can we do versus what should we do. It is not maintaining the maximum possible number of individuals, as there are reasons to have fewer than we could have, and in most cases we are unable to stockpile animals when considering environmental pressures. I'll conclude with a few take-home points. First, often in harvest management there isn't a right or wrong answer, as long as we are executing our mission to preserve, protect, perpetuate, and provide for the public, while remembering that we are stewards of a public resource and therefore need to consider their preferences. Second, we need to be thinking about wildlife resources with a long-term perspective, considering with each harvest management decision, not only how does this impact me here and now, but how will it impact my children's children and their opportunity to carry on this valued tradition. And third, experiences matter. There is occasion to put fewer hunters on the hill than we could have. There is excellent deer hunting in Idaho for both quality and opportunity at hunters, but we do need to consider how they feel about their hunting experience. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about deer harvest management and check out our website for future installments of the state of deer and elk in Idaho.